But you do a really old trick, and he's old. <laughs> he's old and jaded. And like everyone's dead. Like his Fiona's dead, and his oh kids are left. Oh my gosh! And then, it's and just like, back to the start. And then, like a again. young ogre is like, I have to get across the country. And he's like, I'll take you across the country. I'm old dad Shrek. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> he's the last of Shrek. <laughs> <laughs> We're the last ogre Shrek. The we Shrek to, of us. <laughs> we <have> to... <laughs> you know, if, if Shrek Five is like that, I'll watch it. Hello! You're listening to Nostalgia Club. Thanks for tuning in. We are three sound designers who like to talk about the media from our past that makes us nostalgic. My name is Gino, and I'm here with... Michael. And Victoria. And today we're talking about the only movie that's ever existed. Shrek. Shrek. Wow. Yeah, there haven't been any movies since that movie came out. Mm Kind of weird they did the one and then they stopped. (laughs) Yeah, but they did it right. They did it right the first time. And they're like, well, this is it then. Yeah. Throw in the towel. Nothing we make after this can be better. Did you know that's actually a bit of a contentious topic? The yeah. idea that the OG Shrek is, I mean, it's not super contentious, but the idea that the original Shrek is a good movie, or at least is better than Shrek 2, or like, as good. Mm. A lot of people contend that Shrek 2 is better than Shrek 1. I have opinions on this, and I think I've actually stated them in the podcast before, but I can't quite remember, so you just get them again <laughs> <laughs> when they come up. Later, stay tuned for my Shrek 2 opinions. Hot takes. Because that's what the people want. That's what they need. Is that what they're here for? I don't know. <laughs> why are you here? Email us in. Tell us why you're here. We le- we legitimately don't know. We're just sending these into the void. <laughs> I have even less knowledge of what happens after these go out. I don't have access to the accounts. So you can I, if you want. I can if I want? Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. So Shrek yeah. is a 2001 animated movie by DreamWorks created specifically to spite Disney. Oh, but, I didn't know that, actually. Is that, I mean, you can get some of the spite when it comes to, say, the land of Duloc and the little small world. Oh, that's it's a small so world motif. true, yeah. And I, also I just like when they make shade. fun of the princesses. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. And all of the music, the pop music, the rock music that is featured in the movie, because Disney would never do that. Mm. It's so weird because at this point, we're so used to hearing like all kinds of just like contemporary pop music, music yeah. in all kinds of animated features, especially. I don't know what it was like back then. Mm-hmm. But was this legit like a spite project? Or? From what Internet Legend states. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. And I don't know how verifiable this is. So someone will probably correct me at some point. But Shrek was made to spite Disney. And according to the internet, the writers at DreamWorks used to work at Disney but left because of mistreatment or creative disagreements. And so they wrote Shrek as a way to poke fun at Disney. Mm. However, Shrek was not a popular project within DreamWorks because they were also working at Prince of Egypt at the same time. Oh, wow. And so they would send their (laughs) bad editors, their bad animators to work on Shrek as like a punishment. They go to like the Shrek hole (laughs) while the good team worked on Prince of Egypt. It's like the Pocahontas Lion King dynamic. Is that what happened with Pocahontas and Lion King? I'm pretty sure Pocahontas was like the favorite project at the time and the punishment project that they sent people to was Lion King. (laughs) Dang. Yeah. Talk about an inverse. Except in this case, Prince of Egypt is, I'm pretty sure, still well-regarded. I love that movie. And then Shrek, even though it's a very different film, is also well-regarded. Yeah, I mean, you know, props to those editors or animators because they still put out a fantastic movie. Yeah. Someone said that Lord Farquaad is based off John Lithgow, who's a Disney executive. Again, this is all speculation, right? The companies will never confirm this, Mm -hmm. but it's fun to talk about. And clearly there's a lot of references in Shrek that are poking fun of Disney style, Disney's parks, Disney's (laughs) way of storytelling. And it's a very, it's not disrespectful. What's the word? Um, Irreverent. It's a very irreverent movie. And yet still pretty good. Yeah. It's got a lot of heart. (laughs) It does. It has a lot of heart while at the same time not feeling like it's trying to shove anything in your face. Yeah. Like it kind of sneaks up on you. Mm Mm-hmm. The message, the story. Yeah. I don't know if either of you have, like, read the children's picture book, Shrek. No, I haven't. Mm -mm. I read it, I think, a long time ago. I don't think I was a kid. I think I was, like, an adult, maybe, or a teenager. But it's it's kind of like you take the beginning of the Shrek movie in which Shrek is just an ogre in a swamp and Mm -hmm. he's sort of leaning into this betrayal, not betrayal, but portrayal that Mm -hmm. like all people have of him is this like monstrous ogre. 
and he's very like happy with himself and happy with like ah what a terrifying ogre i am and all these fun gross things that i do that you could like read to a kid of all the weird fun gross things an ogre would do and shrek sort of romps across the land and then he encounters a woman ogre who is like just as like happily vile as him Mm -hmm. and they both compliment each other on how Mm. disgusting they both are and fall in love and get married oh wow sweet yeah and then this film seems to take that aspect of shrek that like i'm very happy with myself as Mm -hmm. an ogre and make it like one part of his personality that he has at the beginning of the movie this movie does a lot with exploring His nature and like the general theme that you encounter in some media about how much you are who you want to be versus how much you're leaning into people's expectations of who you're Mm, supposed to be. mm -hmm. It's really tight storytelling. It's really efficient. I see a lot of people using it as an example when teaching screenwriting. Oh. The beginning of it when I rewatched it almost surprised me how quickly it moved. Yeah. It's like, I'm in my swamp. Ah, (laughs) stay out of my swamp. All right. I got to go leave my swamp. It's like... (laughs) Very quick. So a quick synopsis of Shrek, in case you don't know, and if you don't know, I mean, have you been living under a rock, really? Uh, <laughs> well, but, people might have forgotten. Or you're living well. in a swamp. Oh! Hey. Speaking of swamps, Shrek is a movie about an ogre that lives in a swamp, and he likes being in the swamp. But for all intents and purposes, a lot of people are scared of him because he's a big, mean ogre, but he is happy enough to live by himself in his swamp, at least that's what we are led to believe. He comes into contact with a talking donkey, one of many fairy tale creatures that are being evicted by the villainous Napoleonic Lord Farquaad. (laughs) And because all these fairy tale creatures move into Shrek's swamp, Shrek determines, I'm going to go talk to this Lord Farquaad and get them out of here, becoming their unwitting and undesirable hero. He goes off with this talking donkey to get Lord Farquaad to agree. Lord Farquaad, meanwhile, wants to become a full on king. Mm hmm. And sources a magic mirror (laughs) that tells him where to find a princess that he desires. The princess Fiona, who is locked in a tower guarded by a fearsome dragon. Lord Farquaad, seeing how strong Shrek is, basically, tells him, if you go get this princess, I'll move all those fairy tale creatures out of your swamp. And Shrek agrees, and he and Donkey go off and rescue Fiona from this dragon. And the uh, the majority of the movie after that point is the long walk back, where in Shrek, this ogre, and Fiona, this, as far as we know, human princess, and Donkey all uh, just kind of exchange perspectives on life and the perceptions they have of each other. Mm -hmm. And in the course of which we learn that not only does Shrek dislike the fact that he is so ostracized by the Mm -hmm. world around him, but that Fiona herself has a curse laid on her in which she turns into an ogre every night. Donkey learns this first and she tells Donkey, swears that he will not reveal this information to Shrek because she's so ashamed of it. And uh, she believes that by marrying Lord Farquaad, getting true love's kiss, she will be freed of this curse and will be right with the world again. Shrek and Fiona have a bit of a misunderstanding. Shrek thinks that she rejects him. She thinks that Shrek rejects her. Classic miscommunication, low point storytelling. Um, Ah, classic. Classic. They listen to a very specific part of the conversation (laughs) and then immediately leave before the clarification happens. Yes. Very particularly done. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Shrek goes back to live in his now isolate swamp, but Donkey sticks around and kind of talks some sense into him without revealing Fiona's secret. And Shrek goes to interrupt the wedding with Lord Far. Farquaad. Lord Farquaad is eaten by the dragon that is like enamored with the donkey. <laughs> and uh, Shrek and Fiona live happily ever after with the caveat that Fiona, thanks to True Love's kiss, does not remain a human, but instead turns into an ogre, taking True Love's form, whatever that exactly means. And then Shrek and Fiona live happily ever after, and character arcs complete, and that's the movie. Wow. Until the sequels. Until the sequels. <laughs> Before we get too far into talking about nostalgia, mm-hmm. do you have any childhood experiences, your Shrek origin story, <laughs> so to speak? This is very interesting because there's media that we're talking about specifically in this season that's on the docket that feels like it's very like it happened and we ingested it. And then we've been taking it for granted ever since Mm -hmm. because it just lands. And I feel like for me, Shrek is one of those things like it came out and I saw it and I was like, ha ha, 
I like Shrek. And I've just been like taking it for granted in the cultural lexicon of media mm-hmm. ever since. I don't have any specific stories related to it aside from just like, I feel like a number of years ago, I think it might have been a little pre COVID, but like in the meme, the various meme movements online, mm. I feel like Shrek had a big resurgence. Shrek is still pretty big in meme, meme culture. Oh, yeah. But like there was a particular point in which it had like a distinct surge as far as shrek specific memories though that's kind of like (laughs) as close as i get no you're right there was even that animation project all these animators came together and animated like 10 seconds of shrek each in their own unique style yeah that was fun to make an absolutely terrifying and beautiful (laughs) rendition of shrek (laughs) what a lovely homage that's how you know something has landed when you can get a bunch of different creatives yeah to like all contribute to that single like unifying thing i've only seen shrek like three times and one of those times was that project (laughs) so wow that's like a big part of my shrek (laughs) aesthetic in my brain yeah victoria any shrek backstory we can shrek story shrek story (laughs) well on the contrary i'm pretty sure i've actually watched shrek Six or seven times at least. Wow, okay. It was one of the movies that my grandparents had on DVD at their home. I think they had both Shrek 1 and Shrek 2. We would rewatch those pretty frequently when we were there. In particular, in Shrek, there's like two scenes that we would replay constantly. Like we would watch it and then we'd be like, stop, stop, stop. Watch it again, watch it again. We'd like watch that one scene a bunch of times because we just thought it was so funny. One of them is when Fiona is singing with the bird in the morning and Uh, then she sings a really high note and the bird explodes. (laughs) Aspirational. Yeah, and then she makes breakfast after, which is great. (laughs) With the bird's eggs. I do remember as a kid being kind of distraught when I saw that. I was like... Oh, my god! We were not distraught. We thought it was really funny. <laughs> I don't know what that says about us, but... We're getting the full spectrum of human experience here. <laughs> yeah. So there's that scene. And then the second scene is when Fiona fights Robin Hood's men, oh, yeah. the Band of Merry Men. But specifically, the moment where she goes up in the air and it's slow-mo, and then she, like, kicks out both her legs <laughs> into, like, two of the men's faces. Yeah. We watched that moment so many times. But as soon as I was rewatching it earlier today, the moment when one of the merry men is like, why you little and starts firing an arrow, that specific like sound bite, I think is also in, just like seared into my brain. <laughs> just like the the cadence of the yeah, voices like the and the sound effects. Yeah, the cadence of the voice and then the arrow and then the music starting and just like that whole sequence is so good <laughs> um, and very memorable. We also watched a lot of Shrek 2. I... I think I have a better recollection of Shrek 2 just because I think it stuck out more in my memory. I think I like sequel movies that expand on characters that I really love. When we were doing our Narnia episode, I was talking about how The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe is a great movie, but I personally like Prince Caspian more just because we get those same characters, but in a grander scale or like they've already gone through their movie one character development and so then in movie two it's fun to see them as a better version of themselves i suppose and so i think shrek 2 is a similar experience for me where i'm like i love these characters and then shrek 2 expands on it more in a different way it like wrestles with the question of like self-worth and all that stuff so i think it's fun makes sense also, the American Idol segment at oh the end God. of Shrek 2. I think that's like a DVD it's exclusive. It's a DVD exclusive, but we played that so many times. Remember what? when movies did that? Oh, my god! That was so funny. They literally got Simon Cowell to be on it, and it's just so good. I remember that. I honestly think the American Idol segment is a huge part of why Shrek 2 is such an integral part of my childhood. <laughs> It's fine. It makes sense. It's honestly probably, I mean, I haven't had enough DVDs to say like was like in my professional opinion, but I think that's got to be like one of, if not the best, like DVD extras provided with a movie. Yeah. Like in terms of like entertainment value, aside Mm -hmm. from like, here's our full like one hour documentary (laughs) behind the scenes or like, Mm -hmm. you know, anything that some kind of Lord of the Rings Blu-ray might give you with like, and here's, you know, a bajillion things of extra content in terms of like, here 
here's like how much would it equal like 15 to 20 minutes of extra animated content yeah i also love when animated movies include bloopers in their dvd extras <laughs> yeah because it's always really funny like the animation's like not complete so like people's arms are like weird or their faces are in crazy spots. I do love it when the Pixar movies do that. Yeah. I remember the Bugs Life credits having animated bloopers, all sound design and whatnot. I'm just thinking of the, I think it's the Attack of the Clones or Revenge of the Sith DVD extra, where if you hit like a certain sequence on your remote, you can watch Yoda breakdance. Oh my gosh. (laughs) (laughs) I've showed this to you, right? You remember this? I don't think so. I don't think so. That's incredible. We'll pull it up after the recording. (laughs) It's pretty legendary. I seem to remember various movies that would have specific games on their DVD extras. Yeah. And they would always function terribly because it's a DVD. Yeah. (laughs) And you're designed to just hit your, like, crummy remote buttons to make things happen. And it's just chugging and chugging and chugging. (laughs) Especially when it's, like, quick time events. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, Shrek. (laughs) Shrek. I went to the Shrek 40 experience once. That was bad. Shrek spit on me, but my only real significant Shrek memory is that I went to college. This was at the height of the Shrek craze, I guess. (laughs) I guess it's never, the Shrek craze never left and it's still here. Yeah. But the perception of Shrek 2 being a perfect movie on the internet had recently taken college by storm. And Mm. so when I got there, I was one of the only people who had never seen Shrek 2, Hmm. which I guess was a problem (laughs) because at one point they locked me in a room and a bunch of people made me sit down and watch Shrek 2. <laughs> staff, I'm assuming, of the college, right? Yeah. No, no College staff. <laughs> I'm just doing oh. a bit. <laughs> the dean of the college sat me down and was like, you have to watch Shrek 2. And it was fine, I guess. It was a good movie. I don't think being forced to watch Shrek 2 adds to the experience. Probably not. Yeah. They were very disappointed that I wasn't immediately in love with the movie at the but end of it. But they forced you to watch it. Yeah. They were doing a bit. I was in the bit. I watched Shrek 2. It's a movie full of events, that's for sure. <laughs> they really do go from place to place and stuff happens. I do think Shrek 2 is a very good sequel. It's very different from the original Shrek. Very different. Yes. And I appreciate a lot about it in that regard because you, you're you getting a whole new... They're not reduxing something mm-hmm. and they're not like removing as far as I remember because I haven't seen it recently. They're not removing anything necessarily of value from the first, but they are making like a very different kind of movie. Yeah. It's much more an ensemble piece more focus on both shrek and fiona's character arcs yeah animation technology had improved yeah doesn't look quite as wonky (laughs) there's actually more of an antagonist in that movie because in shrek lord farquaad is the antagonist but he's not present throughout the entire movie he's more an antagonist in concept i guess yeah he represents alongside some other things like the forces that would prevent shrek and fiona from being together and having their happily ever after yeah and not even in like an explicitly physical sense but like a just in terms of like like Farquaad's whole attitude mm. is seeking perfection and this and that. Um, he talks mm-hmm. like a lot about you know having a perfect kingdom and yeah. the little small world puppets talk about how Duloc is a perfect place. And in a way, Fiona is looking for perfection too because she has this concept of I'm locked in a tower. This is how it works in fairy tales. Prince Charming is going to come rescue me and sweep me off my feet, and so. Her attempt to marry Farquaad at first was like, this is just what's expected of me. Yeah. You can tell she's like, because she's had that curse her whole life of being an ogre is like, I am not perfect. I have to Mm -hmm. achieve the perfection by carrying out these specific steps and being party to them. And Shrek has, for a long time, it seems, embraced the idea that he is not a part of that Mm -hmm. weave, Mm -hmm. not a part of that fabric. And it's breaking down this idea of like everything not fitting into a specific concept or mold Mm -hmm. of something Mm -hmm. appearances being deceiving and all that Mm -hmm. i don't know it's funny because when you try to put it to words it sounds like well this is this is actually extremely simple (laughs) but the movie makes it feel like there's a lot more nuance yeah and i think part of that has to do with because so much of it is just spent with like the characters kind of just walking and talking yeah that's true yeah they do a lot of walking and talking and just talking about life or 
life experiences. Shrek and Donkey actually have a really nice moment of like vulnerability yeah. where they're just like talking under the moon. And then it's actually quite nice. I was like, oh, they started out like hating each other. <laughs> <laughs> the like slow progression of like Shrek and Donkey's mm-hmm. relationship is very fun to watch. Yeah. Shrek initially being absolutely having wanting nothing to do with Donkey and the way that like the way that their relationship sort of like settles into itself feels authentic in the way that Shrek is a mean guy in a lot of ways. <laughs> mm-hmm. And he's a very standoffish guy and he pushes people away. And a lot of the ways that he becomes more comfortable with Donkey's presence has to do with like poking fun at him, but because of Donkey's character. And <laughs> I mean, in realistic concepts, one could maybe say these are like qualities that both of them need to resolve in therapy. True. <laughs> but like Donkey like never really backs down. It's like relentless optimism relentless <laughs> optimism and wears shrek down in a way and with all the ways that shrek eventually like gets used to his presence even though a lot of those ways are like when they're on the rope bridge over the lava he's like actively like antagonizing himself to donkey donkey's freaking out and he's actively swinging the rope edge. and it's to accomplish a result it's to get donkey across the bridge but it's also like that is a choice in comparison to abandoning donkey Mm. Or, like, trying to let him pass. Like, he's actively keeping this guy with him. Yeah. And, like, he actively goes to save Donkey from the dragon when they're in the castle. So it's, like, yeah, just this slow progression between them both that feels just, like, oddly authentic. Like, I was going to say real, but just very authentic to their characters. Mm -hmm. Like, socially. You don't normally get that in a lot of, like, animation, especially from that time, I would say, where Mm. it's just, like, a whole movie that's devoted to the progression of, like, a social dynamic between two to three people. I wonder how much of that is due to the constraints of the medium at the time, because in, like, a modern animated movie, you can have a dozen characters. No problem. I mean, expensive, but no problem. But at the time that Chuck was being made it's probably better for them to say, let's have three, four main characters. Yeah. We're going to stick with just them for the majority of the scene so we don't have to animate anyone else. <laughs> How can we tell a compelling story about as few people as possible and still make it feel like a big fantasy epic? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a valid point. In fact, it makes me think of, I haven't seen it in a long time, but the original Toy Story. Yeah. So much of that movie is, I mean, sure, there's hijinks and they're sneaking around, but so much of it also has to do with like the evolution of a social dynamic Mm -hmm. in a kid's bedroom between specifically two characters. Just really great writing. Yeah. I don't know if you guys know the specific spell they describe in the movie, but Fiona's curse so to speak. Does it say that when it becomes nighttime, she turns to a monster specifically? No, it just says by day one, one way, one way by night, another. Mm -hmm. So it is very vague. It even is very vague about the whole like true love's form or like love's true form is the wording, I think. Because I was thinking as I was watching the movie without the context of the later movies, it could be implied that Fiona was born an ogre. And then cursed to turn into a human. Oh. And because the norm, the culture of the kingdom is that human is yeah. good, human is normal, and then monster is bad. She could have just grown up thinking, oh, this is my normal side and this is my cursed side. That is interesting. So the full text is, by night one way, by day another, this shall be the norm. Until you find a true love's first kiss and then take love's true form. I think she does say, though, that it's like when she was very young. This spell mm. took so place. So she would remember what so it was like before. So she might have remembered what it was like before, yeah. Rats. There goes my big brain theory. <laughs> that is interesting, though. <laughs> I mean, I think there's interesting things either way. Mm-hmm. If she had been born human, and then she has her human parents, and then she turns into an ogre at night, and they're too ashamed to look at her, and they send her away to a tower. That's the interpretation that the series goes with. Mm-hmm. But I do think it is interesting to think about what if she was born an ogre, but then... She turns into a human, but she actually realizes, oh, being a human is better. Like, I wish I could be a human instead. Yeah. I guess the the way the movies went is a stronger interpretation of the overall themes of the series. Yeah. But there's an alternate universe where Shrek 2 is they go meet the ogre family. (laughs) Go back to my ogre roots. I've been an ogre this whole time. But then there's not as strong of a conflict between the in-laws. Yeah, everything's just fine. Yeah. <laughs> Gino's ideal movie. Everything's fine. There's no conflict. It's over in 20 minutes. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Let's describe some animated food <laughs> or some book food. I was referencing like Redwall and all the times that we like read or watch shows and it's like, 
Why does animated food look so good? Except in Shrek when they go out of the way to make it look bad. That's true. Yeah. Can't say I enjoyed watching Shrek go to town <laughs> on some slugs. <laughs> Speaking of food, Gingy, the cookie. Oh, Gingy. Getting tortured. <laughs> It's, yeah, like we've said, because there's so few main characters that share the spotlight, in my brain, in the Shrek world, Gingy and Pinocchio and the three pigs and the blind mice have such a huge part of the Shrek story. Yeah. It was weird to see them almost non-existent in the actual first movie, which makes sense. You want to expand on these characters later, but... In fact, Gingy doesn't even have a name. Just the gingerbread man. He's just man. the gingerbread man. Yeah. Yeah. Just a Poor one-off, guy. like, funny bit. Dark scene, if you think about it. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's all kinds of things within Shrek that as I was watching, even though it was, like, just clips, I'm like... Y- y- <laughs> like, I used to think... Love was only true in fairy tales. No, um, I used to think <laughs> I used to think animation was one way, and it was sort of mostly straightforward. And you get epics like Prince of Egypt here and there, but mm-hmm. mostly it's like kids' content. And then you have a number of like advancing production techniques for movies, and animation quality gets better over time. And then now we're seeing like more and more mature stories show up in animation, which is true. Mm-hmm. But when I looked at Shrek, I was like, this feels almost like some kind of. Uh, <laughs> like some kind of rounding error or like something slipped through the through the cracks because they like get away with i think a lot more wink wink nudge nudge cursing in this and a lot more like overtly adult humor than i think a lot of other animated movies from the time would have gotten away with well i was gonna say that movie definitely would not fly in today's animation movie era yeah It, it would get a higher rating for sure yeah i mean that's what helped it stand out yeah. And again, mm-hmm. like against all the Disney style, kind of clean, morally righteous <laughs> <laughs> sort of movies. That, you can sort of see the progression. DreamWorks is like, that works. Let's yeah. make Madagascar now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's how you get Madagascar. Yeah. Oh, no. There's the, uh, I no, don't know hey, the I buy it. I think it's like massive for that because it's all this like really beloved. It's like it's sort of ushered in this kind of DreamWorks style, right? Yeah. What you see in all the movie posters that DreamWorks did for a long time with the like snarky eyebrow raise in their <laughs> character that then Disney started mimicking with like that, oh, we know something you don't, but maybe if you see the movie, you'll know it too. <laughs> yeah. And then it got oversaturated and now people actively hate <laughs> the eyebrow raise. <laughs> there's a way to do it that's good, for lack of a better word, <laughs> but there's a certain balance you need to strike. And with Shrek, I don't think it necessarily strikes that balance, but because it was the first to be successful at the time and because the storytelling and the characterization and the heart is just so solid, it can still get away with all of this wink, wink, nudge, nudge, here's a pop song, like dated reference. Yeah. Like it works. Speaking of the music, I mean, we got to talk about All Star. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't know how popular All Star was before this movie came out because I was just frankly too young. I do remember as a little kid and like a summer camp, we would ask them to play the Shrek song, (laughs) which would be an all-star. And we didn't know it as anything else. That was just the Shrek song. Yeah. I forgot how good the like smash cut to Shrek opening the bathroom door and all-star starts playing is it's yeah, it was incredible. Best joke that's lasted in the public (laughs) consciousness. Honestly, it's like a good song, too. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a great song. There's also Hallelujah. That one caught me by surprise. You forgot? Yeah, I forgot. I wasn't ready for it. For me, whenever I listen to that song, I think about Shrek. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That also, to me, is a Shrek song. Yeah. Does Shrek 2 do... I know they have the big climactic I Need a Hero rendition at the end of Shrek 2, but do you guys remember if Shrek 2 does any of that other, like, here's a song during a montage? No, I'm not sure that they do. I think it's mostly score. I think it's... Mainly just I Need a Hero. That is the most Hmm. iconic. Another reason why Shrek succeeds is that they can put all this pop music in, and yet the score is still so good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's still so strong. Usually it's one way or the other. Like they're leaning on one to support the other. But in Shrek, there's such a perfect balance. Gosh, how do they do this stuff? (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. Again, they would throw people into the Shrek hole because they didn't like them. <laughs> Prince of Egypt's where you want it to be. I'm going to verify that real quick just to make sure I'm not just talking on my butt. Well, while you're doing that, I'll say, uh, did you know, this is something a friend of mine, like, let me know, because have either of you ever seen the music video for All Star? Yeah. No. Oh, you have? I have seen it. Yeah. 
So you know it's referencing a 1999 movie called Mystery Men? No. <laughs> it's, he's it's, just like walking down the street and the camera's real close to his face and he's like, ah. Well, have you like seen it all the way through? Probably not. <laughs> because everyone knows like that part, but there's like shots in there that are either from this movie or were shot in connection to it. But I guess there was some movie... Uh, released in 99 called Mystery Men. It was like a superhero movie, I think, about superheroes with like very useless powers. Mm. I don't think it did very well or is especially well remembered given that despite its connection to All Star by Smash Mouth, most people just affiliate All Star with Shrek. Yeah. But isn't that fascinating? All Star was affiliated in some way with a different movie and then Shrek came along and just ripped yeah. all the way yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I'm sure they are not upset about it. It launched them into immortalization yeah okay i found an article confirming my tall tale to quote a cbr article dreamworks used to punish animators by making them work on shrek also shrek was the first movie to ever win the oscar for best animated picture really oh, yeah. which is wild wow well done shrek and then i did Disney i went to shut the... that down ever since <laughs> i went to the academy museum in la and they have the shrek oscar in their display room I guess it's like an option if you win an Oscar, you could potentially have it housed at the museum so that people can see it. Hmm. So there's like a whole bunch of them. But Shrek is there. That's really cool. Okay. Shrek facts. Ready? Shrek facts. Let's go. Spielberg bought the rights first. Huh. Spielberg huh. wanted to make Shrek, but then his option lapsed. Katzenberg got it when they all found a DreamWorks together. Prince of Egypt and Shrek happened at the same time, but... Because Katzenberg wanted the film to be edgy, but never defined what he meant by edgy. So, like, no one knew how far to push the jokes or how far to do anything. They would call being sent to work on Shrek getting Shreked. Because it was so... <laughs> it was considered a bad thing. Get Shreked. They even shut the production down at one point. Although they got it back up in 1997. Much like Lord Farquaad during that bedroom scene. Da, 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 da. You know about that, right? About what? You remember the scene with Lord Farquaad? He's like lying in bed and he's like ostensibly just shirtless, but probably a little more than that. Yeah. And he's like, magic mirror, show me the princess once again. And the mirror's like anthropoid face makes this like look and then like shows him the picture of Fiona. Ah, gross. And then did you not see this? This is like a known internet fact. Oh, I blanked that out of my memory. There, Gina, okay, I guess this is news to you. If you watch that scene again, when the picture of, the, of Fiona shows up, he's, like, admiring her, and then he, like, glances down, like, under the covers and makes this, like, oops kind of face. And you can see a little rise in the sheets when that happens. Wow. Yeah. That's, Did not pick that up. That one probably got past the censors. I think the people that gave Shrek whatever rating it got were like, oh, they say like ass a few times in reference to a donkey. And I think they said damn once or twice <laughs> and they said crap. Uh, but, you know, it's probably fine. But I'm pretty sure the Lord Farquaad boner joke <laughs> slipped right past him. Hate that. Blink and you miss it. Fascinating. <laughs> Fascinating. This movie. This to be movie. fair, when I was rewatching it this morning, I was also like washing dishes and stuff. So I think <laughs> for that scene, I was like, oh, he's like, it's Lord Farquaad. I don't really care about him. So I like looked away during most of his scenes. And it's like, normally I'm not the person who like buys into this stuff. It's like the whole like when Simba, you know, in Lion King, oh, the dust like... <laughs> spells sex. And it's like, no, it doesn't. Oh, the Little Mermaid poster has like, oh, like a phallic image in the in the tower. I'm like, they're just, it's just spires. It's just rock spires. Relax. Mm -hmm. But this one is like, but this this one 100%. is like, it's very distinct. Yeah. It's not even like, <laughs> they oh, did you that can... on purpose. <laughs> well, it's like, it's not even like you see a rise in the sheets. You see Lord Farquaad like raise the sheets and look under and be like, oh, whoops. And it's like, okay, that was very intentional. I that... totally miss that. Wild. Continue, Gino, please. Okay. More Shrek facts. This one's a little less fun. They had Chris Farley doing the voice first, but he unfortunately passed away before mm. the film was completed, mm. which is why they brought on Mike Myers, who recorded all of it. And then said, just kidding, I would like to do it all again in a Scottish accent. And so they paid <laughs> ah. to re-record the entire movie. One of the reasons why it was weirdly expensive. <laughs> Feel bad for those dialogue editors. Oh, gosh. <laughs> and sound mixers. Those poor souls. Well, hopefully they didn't get too far along in the process. Yeah. 
let's face it, they got far yeah, along. Yeah. The <laughs> During your summary earlier, you mentioned the miscommunication that happens. That's kind of the crux of the low point of the movie. Yeah. How do you guys feel about that? <laughs> it's like a very common trope. I'm a little more okay with it in this movie, just because we like the way that these characters are, they're already keeping a certain distance from each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like in this case, it actually is true to their characters that they would miscommunicate. Because I think in other movies and TV shows where the main conflict comes from the characters just simply not telling each other things, it bothers me because I'm like, all you had to do was tell them this bit of information. Sometimes it's not even personal information. Sometimes yeah. it's just like, I went to dinner the other day and the other person is like, where were you? Like, it's stuff like that where it's not even like there's no personal stakes in it necessarily. It's just like they start miscommunicating because of small details. But in this case, one, Shrek never opens himself up to anyone. Mm -hmm. It took an entire journey almost for him to open up to Donkey. Two, Shrek has very low self-esteem already, so I think he would jump to the conclusion that obviously she's a beautiful princess. Why would she want to be with me? Even though I felt that we had a lot in common, I felt like we had this chemistry, but I think he would very easily draw that conclusion of, of course, silly me. I shouldn't have ever thought otherwise. Yeah. So for me, it works in mm -hmm. this movie. And Fiona already is intent not to tell him this yeah. secret anyway. Mm -hmm. I don't know, though. Like, did you have a... It's okay if... I, well, I was thinking about it. As I watched it, I was like, oh, right, here's the miscommunication. <laughs> but if Shrek had learned at any point that Fiona turns into an ogre, it would have changed the entire context of his I object, his oh, yeah. I object mm -hmm. moment. Because then it becomes, oh, it's okay because she turns into an ogre instead of, I have to do this because I love her. Mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. I think you're absolutely right. It feels like the story wouldn't work if Donkey had been like, wait, Shrek, she turned into an ogre. That's what we're talking about. So, yes, it does feel like a very specific sort of threading the needle of screenwriting. Like, oh, you could only say this much, but not this much. And, oh, Donkey promised, so he's going to keep that promise, et cetera, et cetera. But... It was the correct choice. I mean, honestly, shout out to Donkey because he really did keep his promise. Donkey's yeah. a good friend. Yeah. Donkey's a He's great He's a good character. friend. He's a good wingman. Good singer. Yeah. Is that Eddie Murphy? It is Eddie Murphy. Yeah. And Eddie Murphy's also Mushu, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm I gotta look at He this betrayed up. Disney. <laughs> <laughs> when did Mulan come out? In the nineties, right? Ninety seven question mark? Ninety eight. Ninety eight. Off by a year. Know. I'm trying to think now, like how many Shrek sequels have I seen? There's too many. They're, they're making another one. How many are they up to now? So there's Shrek's one, two, three, and then the fourth Shrek movie, which is kind of a Shrek movie. And then they have Puss in Boots, and then they have the good Puss in Boots, and then that one did so well. So now I they're making like both Puss in Boots. I haven't seen the first Puss in Boots. I just don't like the egg. I've seen, <laughs> I've seen the egg. I've seen parts of the first Puss in Boots, and I'm like, I like all these parts. Okay. So Fair that's enough. kind of my, my feeling. I won't, then I will retract my judgment on the first Puss in Boots. I'm sure it's great. I, There's a bad egg in there. Well, Humpty from, Dumpty's the villain. He looks... Oh, I don't remember. Weird. I didn't watch it, but I did see that. Yes. I mean, from everything that I've seen, the second Puss in Boots is more beloved. Well, the second A lot Puss of people Boots, like it. Like, I've had seen? so many people recommend it. I have seen it. Have you seen? No, I haven't seen it yet. Gotta see. It's on my list. It's on it's, my watch list. <laughs> it is a post Spider Verse movie, so the animation uh, style is a lot more like they did a. Yeah, they they went a little extra. I will watch it. I'm excited. A little extra. They went a lot extra. They went a lot extra. And they I think they make really, really good use of the new animation style. Yeah. Like the final fight, not to spoil anything. I don't think this is a spoiler. Final fight's on like a giant shattering fallen star. Whoa. Which is like cool as... <laughs> it's cool. And the music's fantastic. Oh, it's so good. Oh my gosh. And they do the thing where like they stretch the animation, the between frame stretchiness. I like yes. it when they do that. Dang. I wonder if like the new rubber. Shrek is going to be, because that's a weird thought. I don't really picture Shrek as the kind of like property that would benefit from that like extra cartoony comic book-esque yeah. animation. Because, because that... it's just a slower paced thing in a lot of ways. Yeah, it really benefits from dynamic action. Yeah. And Shrek is not known for his dynamic action. <laughs> I mean, maybe he could be. Maybe he fights a lot of guys in the new Shrek movie. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a weird thing thing to see I Shrek bouncing around. I don't know what they could do like at this point. What, where more can they go? Are Shrek and Fiona going to be grandparents at this point? Is there going to be Me? like teenage <laughs> drama with their triplets or whatever? 
<laughs> maybe Shrek's they do a really old Shrek, and he's old. <laughs> he's old and jaded. And like everyone's dead. Like his Fiona's dead, and his kids oh my are left. Oh god! And then, it's and just like, back to the start. And like again. a young ogre is like, I have to get across the country. And he's like, I'll take you across the country. I'm old dad Shrek. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> he's the last of Shrek. <laughs> We're the last ogre Shrek. The we Shrek to, of us. <laughs> <we have> to... <laughs> <laughs> and there's a weird disease that's ravaged the rest of the country. <laughs> so it's like Logan, too. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if, if Shrek 5 is like that, I'll watch it. And they give, you give Shrek a big axe and he calls everyone, boy. <laughs> <laughs> what was Shrek 4 about? I haven't seen it, but I heard it's basically Shrek fan fiction. Like, Rumpelstiltskin's like, go back in time and change things to woo. And then it's like alternate universe Shrek, and he's like, I gotta get out of here. This came out in 2010. They've been working on Shrek 5 for a long time, mm. which is always a great sign. <laughs> Victoria, you're the one with the computer, although I'm sure Gino could look it up on his own. But one of you, because Lord knows I'm not adding it to my internet history, what is the AO3 <laughs> Shrek content? What's <laughs> what's the number there? What is, I want to know the number. Incognito mode, AO3 <laughs> AO3, Shrek. for those who may not know, uh, is the abbreviation for Archive of Our Own. It's where you can find fan fiction for all kinds of properties, pretty much anything you could think of. Yeah. What's the total number you get? The number of fics. Mention Shrek. That have been tagged Shrek parentheses movies. 2,455. Oh, that's actually quite low. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty small. <laughs> I'm going to sort What's by... the top most kudoed fic? <laughs> Kudos. <laughs> oh, okay. That's a Puss in Boots one. Oh. oh. I guess that makes sense. I mean, I was going to say, I genuinely do think that it's possible that people have written very good fan fiction for Oh, these Shrek. are all Puss in Boots. Oh. You know what? This is a different demographic. We yeah. actually, in yeah. order to get a more <laughs> accurate read, we have to go to fanfiction.net. <laughs> You're treading places that I that, know much less about. I don't think about. we should actually look it up, but I think that that one would probably have more Shrek fan fiction. Is because it just older? It's older. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, there are no Shrek fan fictions. Shrek is not in any of these. Wow. This is Puss in Boots. It's all about. Well, type in Puss in Boots because I'm so, here. I'm looking at it. Well, no, I mean, so far, you, like you searched Shrek movies, but if you searched like Puss in Boots, what would you get? Because right now you're just getting, it seems like a cross section of Puss in Boots fan fiction that mentioned Shrek. Okay. Or at least are tagged okay. with Shrek movies, which That's could fine. be very different. Okay. So there's 750 Puss in Boots, huh. but all of the top kudos, like I'm just scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. They're all Puss in Boots. Hmm. Well, you know what? Probably for the best. You know what this means? It means Shrek did it right. That's true, yeah. People got what they wanted. They're like, I don't feel the need to explore this further. Is that what it means? (laughs) That's what I'm going to go with because it makes it simple Mm. (laughs) and it makes me be able to move on from it and not think about the the deeper ramifications. You guys have an experience with those Shrek memes? Is that something we can talk about? When you say those Shrek memes... Yeah, you gotta be more specific. Yeah, because you're talking about, like, an ecosystem. I remember there was a series of videos of a purposefully poorly animated 3D Shrek Mm. being, for the lack of a better word, extremely violent. And that that were very popular in my high school. Oh, you know what? This does ring a bell. And loud. Violent and loud. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't have a lot of experience with them, but I have seen them. There's something about... A large green, a large green Scottish man, <laughs> just yelling, just <laughs> screaming. That really speaks to something in teenage boys. It really gets like a part of their brain. They're like, "This is great content. <laughs> and I need to show. I need to. I need to share this with the world." Yeah. And the louder and the more grotesque, the better. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It kind of does land. I can't say I've had this experience, so I will take your word for it. I think that's good. <laughs> I think I am also glad that I have not experienced this. One last thing I just wanted to call out because I'm a sound design nerd. During the final fight between Shrek and everyone and like all of Farquaad's guards at the wedding, I just admire the dedication that went into just having Farquaad yelling constantly in the background throughout the entire <laughs> yeah. fight. Because I don't think he stopped. He maybe stopped like for like a second or two to take a breath, but he just keeps going and it doesn't really matter what he's saying. You can piece it out if you really listen for it, but I hope they just let the actor in the booth just like go and just like yell whatever came to mind because he's really just yelling the entire time. But it's like so good because 
it reminds you, even if you're not really conscious of the fact that he's yelling, it reminds you that he's still the main threat. Yeah. Yeah. It adds to like the intensity of the scene, the drama. Yeah. Just that the sonic profile of man screaming. (laughs) And conceptually, it's very funny. Yeah, it is very funny. (laughs) I think it's great because that's just Farquaad's character where he's just going to keep yelling even if no one is listening to him. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Because he's like that egotistical and he's just like, I'm just going to keep yelling and saying my he's basically back there just being like i'm king now and i control everything and get him out of here like just all that stuff so he i thought that eaten. was fun yeah i that i don't remember that yeah he, he gets only stops and yelling spat when out. yeah wraps it up pretty quick yeah. sorry i interrupted your no no it was good i just remembered and i was like oh he died <laughs> It was the only way to shut him up. Like, yeah. (laughs) I feel like also nowadays, I think animated movies would stray from having a villain just fully eviscerated on the spot like that. I mean, he wasn't eviscerated. He was just swallowed whole. I guess, Masticated. Oh, yeah. 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 I'm trying to think. Well, he wasn't even really masticated. He wasn't crunched up. He He was was just just gulped. Gulped. Like a pill. (laughs) Like a pill. Pill-sized. Another sound design shout-out would be the bridge scene with the lava and the mm. creaking of the bridge. Good stuff. Yeah. Very great atmospheric stair-stepping, mm-hmm. like, leading up to getting close to the lava's edge and then going over the bridge. Very ominous-sounding. Really yeah. great stuff. Any other last Shrek thoughts? I still think Shrek 2 is good. Let me. I want to put that on the record. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want anyone blasting me. I like Shrek 2. I just think that perhaps... The hype that was given to me did not hold up. Shrek 2 is a, is a movie of iconic moments. Shrek 1 is a movie of less iconic moments. And therefore, I think in the zeitgeist, in the brain of our culture, people remember Shrek 2 more fondly because it went, wow. Yeah. And Shrek 1's like, whoosh, you know? Yeah. <laughs> That makes sense, That's in a all. way. That's my final Shrek thought. Well, the good news, Gino, is that because you've said this at the end of the podcast, all the people that would have wrote in to tell you that you're wrong <laughs> have patiently waited until this moment. You're right. I have perfect timing, as always. It's okay. If nobody answered the call to action earlier in this podcast of tell us why you're here, then I would be surprised if they wrote in about anything else. <laughs> but, you know, that's fine. It's all good. Thanks, Michael. Until next time, remember, you can make something out of spite. And even if you do get sent to the Shrek hole, maybe it'll be good. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, I think I'm going to take some of that energy into my life. Make things out of spite. Just some things. (laughs) Make things out of spite and throw your enemies in the Shrek hole. (laughs) I guess you could sum it up as, until next time, get Shreked. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy that Sorry, the term get Shreked is like, ah, like, that's a funny thing. But it started before the movie came out. That's true. Yeah. They didn't even know that it was going to become saying, a thing. Yeah. People were saying get Shreked before Shrek was a I think thing. that just means that the name Shrek is so good. Like, it came from the book. But, like, yeah, shout out to... Shout out to Shrek. Yeah, shout out to Shrek. <laughs> <laughs> Do, like, a big, like, hand clap, rub the hands together. Ah, oh, shout out to Shrek saying anymore well if you like this episode we release episodes every wednesday but not super regular okay i'm not gonna say (laughs) if you like this episode Uh, stick around if if you like this episode check out some of our other episodes and stay tuned for more episodes to come also if you left us a rating or a review on your podcast platform of choice we'd really appreciate it or you can also email us at nostalgiaclubpodcast at gmail.com and send us your thoughts and we'll catch you on the next episode bye and listen to victoria chang on the pitbull of paradise by rusty quill <laughs> <laughs> just, just like small <laughs> at the very end on the new, 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 new.